guys, um, it's me again. So today I want to talk to you about homophobia, um, which isn't, I know, the most fun topic to talk about, but it needs to be discussed. And as a gay person, and especially a gay, well, I don't know, because it's especially, but as a gay youth, um, I'm 18, it's, it's, um, it affects me like at, at this age, teenagers, especially teenage girls, but I'm sure a lot of teenage guys as well, um, we're unsure about quite a lot in the world and it's uh we well, often lack that confidence, that self esteem and so to be a victim of homophobia as well as all the usual issues like oh, you know, do I look okay, will I get a girlfriend or whatever. Um yeah, so to have, to have someone abuse you like that, it just adds to the, adds to the, the added, I'm not making sense, sorry, it adds to the pressures that you've already got, and like exams, and just it all adds up, and it's really difficult by time. Okay, so, let me get my trusty pad of paper. Alright, okay, I'm going to talk about my experience with the of earlier, because that's what's relevant to me and this is a vlog about my life so yeah i i have been a victim of homophobia which is is um a sad truth but i reckon the majority of, of gay people have been a victim at some point in their life and it sucks you know all you homophobes are it. why why it's like i'm no different on the inside to you the straight people you know i'm feeling hurts when people, you know, you, they help the whole sticks and stones to like, break my bones, but what's that saying? Anyway, it's not true. You know, sticks and stones, yeah, they, they, they hurt, and words, they hurt too. So, uh, I've been a victim in several ways, and they all pretty much happened during my early teenage years. Um, when I first started coming out to my school, they didn't like come out, but coming out to the people, People started finding out because I told them maybe one person who was like the gossip and then everything. Um, it was an all girls school, so we um when we had TA, well I think in like obviously mixed schools you change with your own gender anyway. So but in PA we used to get all get changed and there was like this communal changing room um to get changed into our swap kit like before and afterwards and before. People knew I was gay, it was fine, and we just, you know, got changed, as you do. And then after, after they knew, there were like, a, a lot of them refused to get changed in front of me. And the changing rooms that we had, there were three gyms, and each of them, the changing rooms, there were like two rooms to get changed in. And I'd often find myself pretty much there was like just me in the one room, because depending on what class I was in, I had different classes. Um, but everybody would go into the other room, and it, it's, if that doesn't make a person feel bad, then that person has got no feelings. It really sucks. Because I wasn't looking at them, I wasn't, you know, a, as a 14, 15 year old, I wasn't, you know, that, that's another thing, I wasn't attracted to all, all girls, you know, and they, they just assumed that I was, they assumed that I was looking at them getting changed, and to be honest, we only had like five minutes and I was pretty much concentrating on getting myself changed before my next class and not being late. So that's that's one experience, which happened many times. Um and on the theme of everybody like just because I'm a lesbian doesn't mean I fancy every woman. It's, it it might sound like come as a surprise to you, but not you know, a straight woman doesn't fancy every man to meet. So, um, yeah, so, and then people would, people were often, like, asking me, um, once they found out I was gay, they were like, oh, well, do you fancy me then? And if I didn't, then they'd get insulted. And if I did, they'd call me sick and disgusting. And it's like, it was like a no-win situation. And if I said, yeah, I think you're attractive, but I don't fancy you, because they can tell me someone's attractive, and that other people would be attracted to them, but you don't fancy them. And um, then they get insulted by that, or they're like, well, why don't you fancy me? You must not be gay. 
I mean, I don't know. Which is a bit crap, really. That's fine. Um, another another thing that I've experienced is, like, again, related to the changing rooms in PA. And I took GCSE PA as well as having to take core PA. So I had PA like four times a week. It was quite a lot. Um, people used to go through my bag when I went to the toilet. Um, like if after school or before school, I'd, I'd go to the toilet and obviously I'd leave my stuff like my change of clothes and my bag and my coat and jacket or whatever. Um, and I'd go, to, I'd go to the toilet and I'd come back and people would be that have gone through my coat pockets, that have gone through a bag. I don't know what they were looking for. Like, I don't know, a strap on or something? I mean, what? The sort of thing that I would, you know, what, what did they expect me to be carrying to school? Um, and when they did, like, one time there was this one girl and she was mainly the one to start the day for the bag and you know who you are. I'm not gonna mention your name but you know who you are. Um she found like this bottle of like pills which I had been taking. Um and they weren't like, like hardcore speed or pee or whatever. Um they were just like antidepressants because that's what I needed at the time. Um and then she was like um, she had this bottle, and it was like a, a clear bottle, and a, like, you know, half litre. And then and, um, she had this bottle, and she was like waving it around her, and going, Oh, you know, look at this, look at the bottle, look what's in Nikki's bag. And then she was like asking, well, What is it, what is it? And when I told her, she was just like, Oh, no, 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 you know, gay drugs, you know. Um, yeah, um, okay. Now on to my worst experience. Um, so the other, the other like a middle. But this one, it wasn't necessarily the experience itself. It was the fact that no one who was around me, like none of the factors, why I did everything to stop it or ask me if I was okay afterwards. But anyway, what happened was it was work experience at the time, and I was doing my work experience with the two other girls at this one place, this one shop, and um. I was walking home from work the one time, and I was walking home on the high street because that's the route that I was taking. And you know, I was just in my work home and stuff. And um, so I wasn't looking obviously gay, I was just wearing you know, the polo shirt that I had to wear and jeans and dress. Um, and then I wasn't, I was just walking along and I wasn't really paying much attention because then um, I might have been listening to music anyway. Um, and then all of a sudden, like, I felt something hit my shoulder, and it was um, like a half full McFlurry, you know, from McDonald's, and um, like that ice cream stuff, and it, like the lid was off, and it went all over my back and all over my thighs, and I was like a black shirt, so and it was white ice cream stuff, and then mess, and it was on the high street, like all the people around and. Yeah, and it was it was this the person who's throwing it was this girl who was I was who was doing work experience with and she was at my school so obviously she knew what day. And then they um <clears throat> she and her mate were they also threw um and this is the thing, her, her mate had been I thought she was my friend, you know, she'd been nice to me. And then obviously this first girl, let's just call her P, um, P I had obviously told this other girl that I was gay and then I said, had completely changed her mind and did not want to be my friend anymore. So they, um, they threw them at Flurry and then they threw like paper bags or like, you know, all the rubbish from McDonald's at me on the high street. And then they had to walk home um, like that, all covered in ice cream and crap. And it was like, not one passed by asking me if I was okay or said anything about it. And I was 15 at the time. And I was pretty upset about it. Um, yeah, and I got home and like my mum was there and she asked me like what what had happened and why it was like that and why I was like that and yeah. Anyway. I think I'm nearing the uh, ten minutes. So um that's that.